Good. So we're talking with Jackie Maxwell, the Artistic Director of the Shaw Festival in Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario. And we're talking about um, a very ambitious uh, program of 10 one-act Noel Coward plays that the festival is, is going to be putting on uh, this year. So Jackie, um, maybe we can just uh, start by you telling me uh, exactly what inspired you to, uh, sure. to stage all of these plays. <laughs> what madness overtook me. Yes. <laughs> um, well, it's interesting, actually. The, the, the original kind of little bug for it was um, we have intern directors here at the Shaw who two, we have two a year who come in and work as assistants, and then at the end of their tenure, they get to uh, put on a one-act play from the mandate with members of the company. And one of the directors, Kate Lynch, had put on uh, Hands Across the Sea which is one of the 10, and uh, I think one of the, the, the best, in fact, a sort of beautiful jewel-like comedy, short little comedy, very funny. And I was looking at it and thought, God, they really are, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a big short story fan, so again, there's something with that idea of, of something that is, is, is kind of tiny and perfect uh, really struck me with this particular one, so I thought I really must go and read all of those one-act plays. I knew some of them. Still Life, for example, was the movie Brief Encounter. and But anyway, I, I, I foraged around and found all ten of them and read them, really again thinking about uh, lunchtime more than anything, because we do one-act plays. And um, I was really struck at the incredible range. I mean, there are sparkling comedies like Hands Across the Sea. Still Life is a sort of poignant drama. There's a, a, a wacky fantasy musical. There's two other musicals. There's very dark dramas, comedies. It's, it's an amazing sort of range of genres that he covered. And, um, and so I started to just read around about them. And I was reading a new biography where uh, about, um, about Coward and the chapter about eight, uh, tonight at 830 sort of mentioned that he had always wished that they could eventually all have been done together and they never had been. So really, that was kind of like the light bulb. And I thought, well, you know, who the hell else could do this? Um, we certainly could. It's, uh, you know, to, to actually celebrate this cycle of plays. Um, and uh, the other thing that really pushed me was the fact that he wrote them, well, he wrote them essentially for actors to show off. I mean, he actually wrote them for he and Gertrude Lawrence to show off, to be more specific. Right. Because they're performed in triplets. And so in an evening, you get to see actors swing from one world to a vastly different one to a vastly different one. And of course, at the Shaw, our company being the central focus of what we do and the, the, these extraordinary actors, I thought, well, what fun for the audience to, to watch that very thing happen each night. So I divided them into three sets of three, and, uh, and then the, the extra one star chamber, which has only been seen once before, right. uh, ends up being our lunchtime. So that's, that was the genesis of it all. Right. So did Coward and Gertrude Lawrence, did they ever actually perform all 10? Uh, no. No? No. no. They, um, they, they, they started with three. He and Gertrude Lawrence were actually doing private lives up north in England, and he started he was getting bored basically and he started writing these one acts they opened three uh they brought them into london then he wrote another three and then another three um but they never actually kind of played all nine at once they kind of revolved them then the the tenth one was written to replace uh one and uh but it got taken out again so so all ten of them have never been done you know in a continuous rep like we're going to do them this year right 